Hello everyone, we are today here at the Military History Museum of the Bundeswehr in Dresden and this is the curator of the Fallschirmjäger Ausstellung, the exhibition on the Fallschirmjäger, Magnus Pahl. Hello. And today we will discuss the origin of the name Green Devils, Grüne Teufel, and we will also look at some other of these names. So, Mr. Pahl, what was the, what is the origin according to your current research on the topic of the Green Devils? No, actually, we don't know when it was introduced uh, first. Um, uh, Goebbels, as the German propaganda minister, uh, quite often used it during the battles uh, around Monte Cassino in 1944, in the spring of 1944. And um, uh, he claimed that it was originally um, a name given by the American troops uh, to the German paratroopers because the combat value of the German paratroopers was very high, according to, to the uh, propaganda claim. And uh, that was why the Americans chose the nickname Green Devils, because uh, they thought uh, they fought like devils, devils no? with a very uh, high motivated, aggressive uh, combat style. So. But but basically, there's no proof currently found that the Americans actually use the term. Um, you find it in some sources. Um, they are, of course, they used it, but it's not clear uh, when it uh, occurred the first time. So, it, uh, who it originated? Because the who? Yes. Because the Fallschirmjäger themselves use, used it like as a writing. Yes. But so it might have been that they heard it from Goebbels and they used it in the field and then the Americans adapted it actually or something yes. along those lines. And I found in a, in a um, source about a Panzer Division, about the 5th Panzer Division, Tank Division, that uh, they were nicknamed Red Devils after or during the Western Campaign in 1940 because they had gray colored tanks. Uh, and had red markings on it, only to, to uh, for, for reasons um, to distinguish. Of, to distinguish, and and uh, each company uh, has had a different uh, number, and so on and so on. And they use the red ones, red uh, markings, and the infantry men, the Schützen of this division, uh, said, okay, they are our red devils because they had those red markings on the gray turret of the tanks, so Panzer 3 or Panzer 4. So, so they had the name Rote Teufel, Red Devils, and they at some point were, were also fought with the Fallschirmjäger. Yes, that's right. Um, only uh, two tanks uh, actually reached Crete in May 1941 by a seaborne operation, where landed at Crete. And uh, I'm not sure, maybe um, those tanks also wore uh, the red uh, markings. Uh, I'm not sure about it, but uh, of course the, the Fallschirmjäger heard about it, the Red, Red Devils of the, the special tank regiment. And uh, in 1942, 43, the first parachute division, the first Fallschirmjäger division, fought in Russia at the Eastern Front. And uh, in the area, um, in the Army Group Center area, Heeresgruppe Mitte, there were also those guys from the from the tank regiment from the fifth panzer division and maybe there is uh, some some connection so so the name also might originate from that because they were red devils and they, they had a green uniform and we all know like like many claim like or it was a claim by the, by the americans in the first world war that the germans called the u.s marines teufelhunden which of course most people that know german properly it's it's not grammatically correct. So, and as far as I know, I looked up a bit on it and it's still debatable if the Germans ever used the name. And so with devil dogs and also with, so, so this is why we discuss this because very often these nicknames for green devils, devil, do, devil dogs, but also the, the ghost division and are often debated if it really was originated with the enemy because of course it's hard to tell because if you take a prisoner and he mentions it, and then you adapt it, there likely is not a written source on it. Yes, and uh, actually there were even two ghost divisions, yeah. as you know, the 7th of and Rommel the 11th, yeah. and the 11th. Uh, it was not a tank division in 1940, it was a brigade. 
and it was uh, also very fast and moving forward during the Western campaign. And so uh, both Panzer divisions later, the 7th and the 11th uh, tank division, Panzer division, um, had those nickname Gespenster division, ghost division. Yeah. And, and the, the 11th, the irony is the 11th, I think, was had it, uh, the ghost as a symbol, whereas the 7th didn't have it. And I think at, in one museum, there's actually uh, a tank which has the ghost on it of the 11th, but the, the, uh, the division symbol of the 7th, which is like the complete combination. And, and so, and when I looked at the, the ghost division video, I looked at, at, at the claims and everything in Frieza, and I didn't found any French sources if I'm not wrong. I was actually back then hesitating if I should do the video or not, because I was like, the source situation is not the best. So, so I'm still not sure if the claim is in any way correct that it came from the French at all. And so it's, it's, it's a bit of a problem. So who said it first and, and where I think it's it uh, good to be uh, comparable. Um, I think that that's uh, very comparable. And um, I think uh, we have to say that the Green Devil was, uh, Devil was also used um, in some sourcing according to some sources after the war, even during the battle uh, about Crete in 1941, because um, as you see, uh, we've got the green colored bone bag, the so called Knochensack, and of course the combat uniform, the, the bone bag, uh, was green. And that's uh, the main explanation because um, they were called uh, the green devils, because the rest of the uniform was yes, a mixture between gray and blue, um, Luftwaffen blau, yeah. Air Force blue. But um, yes, um, the, the, the combat uh, uniform was actually green. And that is the main explanation for, the, for this name. So, it, which makes a lot of sense, but the question is, yeah, wh when did it originate from? And the great irony is, because I read in a book about the Knochensack, that the name came from post-war, but you mentioned that now veterans used it all the time, yes. and it's pretty sure it originated also from, from everything else, that it originated actually in the war. So you, you can also have the other way around, that, that somebody claims, no, that's an, a, a, a name that came after the war, and actually it come, came from, and actually it doesn't come from that. So. So yeah, it's it's kind of complicated. I think that's the case with the tank, as you mentioned before, uh, in, in the museum, because often uh, people ah, from yeah. the museum in the 50s or 60s and 70s, it was not uh, so important for them to be so mean and so accurate yeah. on on such details like like the ghost division. Um, they heard it. Uh, the, the literature was not the sources yeah. were not not so uh, um, available like like today with the internet and so on and so on, and so yeah, they they used their imagination, their fantasy, and often um, made, made uh, such symbols uh, on on their own belief or what they thought. It, it didn't help that the this insignia for the Panzer division has also changed over time, which is also quite confusing. I look up and then, oh, 1940 was this symbol, and then it changed to another rune in 1941, for, where I have no idea why you changed the, I mean, I get some, 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 like the ghost that you added at one point, but the more or less official insignia with the runes, I, I'm still, I haven't looked it up why, but there might be a reason for this, but it's still like, okay, why did you do that? And yeah, without internet, it was, it's a very hard thing to, to actually find out because you have to go get the book if you even have a book on it. And then you have to ask somebody. Yeah. Yes, and often, uh, quite often the capture, captions were also wrong. So yeah. they were misleading. Um, and, and also often even veterans did not know it better and, and wrote a wrong caption. Yeah. And, and you can't rely um, and every time on, on those uh, early books yeah. because there are also mistakes because we are all human and uh, there are also um, yeah wrong wrong descriptions in, in the caption. There was one I think uh, uh, in, uh, a, um, a divisional history of a panzer division and I think there was a, a wreckage of a of a T30 no of a KV1 I think and they know that it was a, a, a T34 
I was like, okay. <laughs> and the, usually those those divisional histories were written by, by veterans of the division yeah, themselves. That's right. So it, it was quite okay. It was quite astonishing. So okay, you got it wrong, but then again, yeah, errors happen, and and sometimes they didn't know better. And actually, I think Ralf Graz mentioned at one point that some soldiers confused both tanks and yeah. that the myth or the, the, the superiority of the T-34 to a certain degree comes back to that, that they fought against the KB-1, which was more heavier than the other thing. But yeah, we are getting off And you have now. the same as the Panzer IV and the Tiger tank. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's the, the, the most uh, often that, misused. That, that, okay, we're going off topic here, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, this is actually quite interesting. As far as I remember, some the Soviets at that point, sometimes in Red Army, thought that the shirts and the skirts mm. on the Panzer IV were introduced to make them look like tigers. No, it's of course nonsense. Okay. Yeah, it's nonsense, yeah. but but we know better. Yeah. And it, it was yeah, like, okay. and and there were other things like high pressure armor, air, air armor, and, and other stuff that was ascribed to some some stuff like that. So, so as you can see, in combat and on the front, names and and myths and some stuff all goes a long way. So it's sometimes very hard to track back where the origin came from, where it originally came from. And there was a second explanation. Uh, maybe I should yeah. mention it as well. Um, the German paratroopers used also per um, oh. And um, even um, General Student, the chief in command uh, from the paratroopers, mentioned it in his memoirs. Um, that uh, for test cases, he said, and uh, during the Battle of Crete, they used a pervitin. But it's to until now, it's not clear in, in how many um, how, how big um, the usage was actually. And um, some sources claimed, but maybe that was also for propaganda reasons. I don't know that uh, the dead paratroopers, after they laid down in the sun for, for many days, um, had a green skin, some kind of green skin. And some of, of the early historians or veterans claimed that uh, this green skin of the dead paratroopers uh, re relied or was connected to the use uh, of pervitin. Okay. So that they that the, the corpse of them, the dead bodies, looked uh, a little bit green. It's green. And, and thus the name Green Devils. Yes. That is also it's not so common as an explanation, but there are some who who claims that even even uh, until today. Okay. So I never came across that one at all. No, but I I found it yeah. uh, in, in some sources, but I'm not sure about. I doubt it personally. I yeah. think. Uh, it's, uh, of course, uh, um, more um, convincing, the explanation is more convincing. Uh, that's, the other way around. That's because the other way around, that's because of the uh, camouflage smog. So. Okay, anything to add? Yeah, maybe about the, the devils, uh, because in 1940, uh, the Dutch also had uh, infantry soldiers, um, some kind of elite soldiers, and they were uh, called the Black Devils also. So um, the paratroopers in 1940 fought against the Dutch army as well in May 1940. So we have another uh, relation, so possible relation, connection. And um, of course, um, we have uh, the Black Devils also uh, for special forces, American Canadian Special Forces Brigade was used in Italy in the autumn of 43 mm, okay. against the Germans uh, at the Bernhard at the winter line. And they were called the Black Devils because um, they were very good and keen in, in um, conducting uh, night attacks against the Germans. They came in the night, in the dark night, in the black night. And so they were called the, the Black Devils shortly before Casino. Mm. So. Maybe a second or third uh, connection. Yeah. I think that's quite interesting. And I think we have to mention um, the British paratroopers because they were called the Red Devils as well. Ah, okay. They had the Red, uh, the red Beret. Yeah. The Red Beret. 
And so they were called the Red Devils. And they were, of course, they had their, their big uh, mission uh, during the fighting uh, at Arnhem, Arnhem uh, in the Netherlands in uh, September 1944. But, but that was afterwards, basically, after Monte Cassino. Yes, uh, the Battle of Arnhem was in, in yeah. September 1944. But so, but did, so, uh, so that's a comparison, but it w couldn't be an origin name for the name. Or maybe an origin name for the Red Devils. Uh, I think uh, red and green devils uh, fought each other at ah, North okay. Africa ah. as well in, in, uh, in the turning uh, between 42 and 43 in the, in the turning of the years. And, and they were fighting each other in, in North Africa and red against green devils. And there's also, of course, an osprey. Uh, an, an Osprey book, an book, uh, booklet. Which, which, booklet, which is uh, only about those, those uh, first engagement of the, this first uh, fight uh, between the two parachute uh, troops. Oops, yeah. yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, I knew from your book that they were in, in North Africa that the Germans were there, but they didn't know that the British were as well there. Okay. Yes, and in Sicily in uh, July '43 as well. There were ah, heavy yeah. fightings between the first parachute division, the Green Devils of Monte Cassino, the later ones, and the Red Devils okay, at yeah. the Cimeto Bridge and so on. And so Falschemega and British Airborne Forces clashed together uh, even uh, in a direct way uh, in 1943. So. so yeah, so basically a lot of possibilities were the name could have taken from, <laughs> yes. from 1940 on, on, but from the from the Dutch, from the, from the Panzer Division, from the Black Devils in Italy, and from the Red Devils as well. Yes. So basically, every, <laughs> every year of the war, have probably at least one, one potential unit. Yes, and last but not least, ah, one, okay, one, one last more. comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I read um, the memoirs of, of unpublished of a German paratroop, uh, paratrooper, a veteran, and he said, okay, we called us uh, ourselves as the where is the blue devils because of the blue Luftwaffe ah, of the airborne original uniform. original uniform blue devils because they uh, used the, also the the, um, the, the mantle ah, the, um, um, the coat the, of course the coat the great coat they used it at the eastern front and was uh, also in in the blue of the Luftwaffe and so they used it uh, during the fighting at the eastern front. Um, uh, and, and described themselves as Blue Devils. Then they went to Sicily and south of Italy in uh, summer of '43, and it changed. They called themselves uh, um, the Yellow Devils, actually, because ah. because the uh, uniform for, for tropical yeah. areas was uh, some kind of khaki, like the British had. And last but not least, they called themselves the uh, Green Devils because fighting in, uh, in the area around Casino, they used uh, the camouflage, the green camouflage smog, or the camouflage uh, splitter tarn uh, as well. Okay, the that, green one. I mean, I mean, that, that is actually the, the most interesting <laughs> and, and, and nice um, explanation. Because I mean, you, you have it depending on, on the terrain where they're fighting or yeah. what equipment what, what yeah. they're using. Yeah. So maybe also the white devils because often they yeah. used in, in snowy uh, landscapes they used uh, I don't know uh, sheets of um, improvised and and or had um, um, winter uh, combat dresses and they were of course white and that was also used uh, but, but white you, devils. But you didn't find the blue devils in any other sources so far. Only in the in the memoirs of, of the paratrooper. Okay, so probably we wouldn't need to check the the core they were attached to in the army of if it mentions or, or the. I don't the war think diary. so. Probably I don't not. think so. That that's uh, from from mouse to mouse, and that's the so-called flüster propaganda. They were nicknamed, uh, which were used by the soldiers themselves. But I think that's. But it's also kind of weird that nobody else mentioned this before, right? No. Yeah, it's so, so that's, no. that and it's one good. single source. Yeah. So you have to be very yeah, cautious yeah. about it. But uh, of course, I have the signatures from the archives, um, one source. But I'm not sure. Maybe it's only his unit. Do you know when he wrote it? After the war. Okay. Um, so uh, I think um, it, uh, there's some truth in it. Otherwise, he yeah. would have done it. But um, I think um, maybe it was not so common used. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe it's only uh, was used only in his uh, company or yeah. battalion, or you don't know. And it's one. Uh, it's, there's no confirmation. It's only one single source, and uh, I would be very cautious yeah. about it. But we can. I think uh, that's the time to discuss this. Yeah. And and it's it's there. It's in the world. Uh, but but there's only one single yeah. source about it. That's very interesting. Yeah. So yeah. As you can see, it can be quite complicated, but that's why we're in Germany. So, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.